like what you see here? Then be sure to subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8, a channel devoted to the history of college football. New videos drop twice a week. Click the card in the upper right corner or the link in the description to subscribe now. And now, on with our feature presentation. If you know the name Frank Tavares, odds are it's for his time with this team right here, the Pittsburgh Pirates. And it makes sense why you would think of him as a member of the Pirates, seeing as he played just about the entire 1970s with them, and started just about every game at shortstop during the mid to late 70s. The Pirates were absolutely dominant throughout that decade, making it to the NLCS six times, and shortstop Frank Tavares played a key role on a good chunk of those teams, as without his speed and base running, the Pirates might not have been so good. Even though he was somewhat frustrating to watch at times, as his fielding was not so great, this was a man who was a stolen base machine, finishing third in the NL with 58 stolen bases in 1976, second in the NL with 46 stolen bases in 1978, and first in the NL with that incredible 70 stolen bases in 1977, which at the time was the second most in team history for a single season only behind Billy Sunday when he stole 71 bases for the Pirates in 1888, pre-live ball era. However, you don't get on base that often without being a good hitter. You have to have the chops at the plate. And even though Tavares was best known for his speed, make no mistake, he was no slouch at the plate either. And in 1980, he embarked on one of the greatest and most shocking moments of his career, when he went from a decent hitter so one of the best hitters in baseball overnight, putting together a long hitting streak with this team right here, the New York Mets. What's the secret to a good hitting streak? For some people, it's superstition. For some people, it's just about being in the right mindset. For some people, they have no idea, and they don't do anything differently. Whatever they're doing is just working. For some people, they take a suggestion from their batting coach or their manager about their stance or their approach at the plate. You get the idea. It varies from person to person. And for Frank Tavares, the reason for his super long hitting streak and one of the best stretches of his career? It had to do entirely with his wife. Seriously, his wife. Because this is the story by what might just be. Considering the circumstances, and considering how it came to be, one of the craziest hitting streaks in the over 60-year history of the New York Mets franchise. Before I talk about the hitting streak in question, we need some context to understand just who Tavares was, and how he was playing before the streak. In the middle of the 1979 season, the Mets acquired Tavares in a trade, and they had to be pretty pleased with how he performed right after coming over seeing as he had one of the best years of his career. He was a force on the base paths yet again, stealing 42 bases. He hit 263 and 635 at-bats, which was the second highest average of his career. And he had 33 RBI, which was the second most of his career, all while posting a slugging percentage of 337 and an OPS of 639, both of which were also the second best totals of his career. Tavares was happy in New York, saying, I feel happy. I feel at home. I have lots of family in New York. Manager Joe Torrey was happy with Tavares when he came over, saying, he's a great player. It just seemed like this was a perfect fit in more ways than one. And while the Pirates were definitely happy about the trade, seeing as they probably don't win the World Series that year without the trade, the Mets were also happy, as they had quite the shortstop with one scout even saying that after just one season, Tavares was the best shortstop in the history of the Mets, and that's pretty high praise. So could he keep them momentum going into 1980? Well, not quite. Because 25 games into the season, and that momentum that Tavares had from 1979 was not carrying over into the new decade. Through those first 25 games, of which he played and started in 24 of them, he was hitting just 206, barely above the Mendoza line. He drove in just two runs, grounded into his fair share of double plays, and had a negative war offensively, 
meaning that if the Mets trotted out a league average shortstop, they would have been a significantly better team. And it gets even more alarming when you realize that things weren't getting better. In fact, they were only getting worse. In his last 12 games, not only had he failed to drive in a run, but he was just 8 for 51 with a batting average of 157. Keep in mind that the league-wide average was 265, so he was hitting more than 100 points below what was expected of a major leaguer. To say that Tavares was struggling would be putting it lightly, especially after his final game in this abysmal stretch, where he was 0 for 4 against the Montreal Expos with 3 strikeouts. In other words, this was the last guy you expected to get hot and go on the second longest hitting streak of his career. There was a lot wrong with the Mets by this point. They were 9-16 and, and had won just 36% of their games, which, extrapolated over a full season, comes out to 58 wins. And while there was a lot wrong, perhaps nothing was as bad as the play of Frank Tavares. Even manager Joe Torre flat out said that the reason for the Mets struggling was because of Tavares, at the top of the order, getting absolutely nothing going. And the offense was hurting as a result. As Torrey said, if we're going to be making any kind of move, Frankie has to get started. He's at the top of the order. Tavares is the guy we need to get started. He's not selective. He gets too down on himself, and it snowballs. And when asked about why he was struggling, Tavares was unsure, saying, I don't know what's wrong, but I think I'm jumping at the plate. He knew he was down on his luck, but had no answers to fix it. Which is why it was crazy when immediately after, the man hitting 206 on the season at 157 over the last two weeks, somehow, completely out of nowhere, became one of the best hitters in all of baseball. Seriously, there's breaking out of a bad slump and getting your groove back, and then there's whatever the heck Frank Tavares did. It started after two straight hitless schemes with a hit and a run on May 10th against the Montreal Expos. Then, it continued with five hits in two games against the Reds, with both games being multi-hit affairs. Follow that up with three straight games against the Braves with a hit, including a three-hit performance on May 18th during the second game of a doubleheader, and followed that up with three straight games against the Astros with a hit, including going 7 for 9 over the final two games of that series, then followed that up with three straight games against the Braves with a hit, reporting multiple hits in all three games of that series, and followed that up with two straight games against the Cardinals with a hit, and just like that, you're back in business. Over the course of that insane 14 game hitting streak, Tavares raised his average from a dismal 206 to an incredible 313, going from barely above the Mendoza line to one of the league leaders in most major batting categories across the National League. During those 14 games in particular, he was unstoppable as he hit 492, going 30 for 61 and posting an on base percentage of 508. To put that into perspective, he was getting on base more than half the time. If he had a game where he went 3 for 6, his on base percentage in that stretch would actually go down. The Mets were starting to win some games again thanks to Tavares picking it up, and Tavares was finally looking like his 1979 self at the plate. The team was impressed. Second baseman Doug Flynn said he couldn't even do what Tavares was doing in softball and Joe Torre said, he's disciplined, he's not going for bad balls. That's quite the contrast from a few weeks ago when Torre said that he wasn't selective with his pitches. And this 14 game streak, as mentioned before, was the second longest of his career, with the longest one coming in 1977, when he had a 15 game hitting streak from September 2nd to September 15th. However, in that streak, he hit 377 over the course of those two weeks. Over this streak, he was hitting 492. Legitimately, after playing some of the worst baseball of his career, Tavares was now a hitting machine and was playing the best baseball he ever played in his life. As Tavares said, I'm swinging the bat pretty good and I'm having a little luck. I don't think I've hit like that before. 
And no, he's not exaggerating. He had never hit like that before. This was the best stretch of his career. Which raises the all-important question. How the heck did this happen? How did Tavares go from a man who couldn't hit anything, and for whom the baseball looked like the size of a pebble, to a man who could hit everything, and for whom the baseball looked like the size of a beach ball? Well, it had to do with an adjustment that he made at the plate, courtesy of an unlikely source. Because it wasn't his hitting coach that gave him some pointers, nor was it Joe Torre, nor was it another player on the team. Rather, it was none other than his own wife, Satara Vargas. Seriously, if it wasn't for Tavares' wife, his career is looking completely different. Allow me to explain. Back in 1980, the Mets were shown on local television through WOR. For the New Yorkers and Long Islanders out there, you know this best as Channel 9, or My 9. And Vargas, wanting to be a supportive wife, watched just about every game that she possibly could. Anytime the Mets were on TV, and Tavares was playing, you could bet that she would be there to watch the game and see how her husband was doing. Meaning that she watched that awful three strikeout game against Montreal, where her husband got nothing going. And during this terrible slump that Tavares was going through, Vargas noticed something that wasn't quite right with her husband. His batting stance was all off. He was trying to do too much. He never looked that comfortable stepping into the batter's box. In her mind, Tavares was crouching way too much, and it was affecting him in a big way. He needed to stand up straight, and once he adjusted his stance and stood up straight, his hitting would improve. As Tavares would say, Before, I was down too much. My wife told me I hit better when I stand straight up. She don't think I swing the back good. He then added, The last day we were in Montreal, my wife was watching me on TV. She said I was staying down too much and should straighten up. She was right. And adding one last piece to that, he said, She noticed I was crouching more than usual. She told me to stand up straighter, and I did. And the rest is history. Thanks to a tip from his wife, Tavares played the best baseball he had ever played in his life. Sometimes, advice comes from the unlikeliest of places. You might get it from people who you normally don't take advice from. You might get it when you're not even looking for it. You might get it from a stranger who you will never see again. And sometimes, you get advice about your job, not from someone in your job or your boss, but from someone close to you that might not know the ins and outs of the business and the job requirements. And yet, they know exactly what's wrong and know exactly what they're talking about. And that's what happened with Frank Tavares in 1980, when his play improved tremendously. All because his wife gave him the pointer of a lifetime. Because in 1980, as Tavares learned, not only does listening to your wife make you happy, but it can also make you happy too, because she's always right and knows a thing or two about baseball. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.